good afternoon. So I remind you, we have um, calculated the uh, Lorentz transformation of electromagnetic field la last time, and there, and there have been some ambiguities. <laughs> no, no, no ambiguities. However, the final result was uh, not confirmed because of some minor errors. So I will remind you that first of all, we have used the following Lorentz transformation that t nu t is equal alt t times hyperbolic cosine plus x hyperbolic sine of that lambda and x. So this is purely two-dimensional boost transformation and the longitudinal uh, x mixes with time and vice versa, whereas the, uh, the remaining orthogonal transformation uh, coordinates do not change. Yeah? x time is t hyperbolic sine of lambda plus x hyperbolic sine of lambda. Now, we have, first of all, hyperbolic cosine of lambda we have denoted by C, whereas hyperbolic sine of lambda was uh, called S, and in physical in physical uh, units it was minus u c where u was a velocity of the new observer. What is new observer? It's the one which remains at point new x equals zero. Yeah? New x equals zero. And new x equals zero gives you that x is proportional to t and so on in this proportionality coefficient we call simply velocity, right? And this was this result. <coughs> so, and the uh, inverse, the inverse transformation consists in changing lambda to minus lambda or in changing u to minus u because it is, it is the same, yeah? And now, plugging this transformation into... Yeah, so maybe I will rewrite this transformation in terms of those physical, so here is C Yeah, so you may sign it. So it is C times T <laughs> minus U X. Whereas here we have again C and uh, here minus u t plus x. Oh. Where c is this hyperbolic sign which in many books is called gamma or something like that, just this uh, it is nothing but 1 over square root of u uh, 1 minus u square. By the way, u is velocity but as a percentage of the uh, speed velocity, uh, of the light velocity, yeah? Because we use here the same units for time and 
and distance, like the astronomers do. Yeah, they calculate uh, time in years and they calculate distance, for example, because maybe they also use other units, but for instance, the, for the distance, they uh, uh, use light years. So what is velocity of light? One light year per year, but, but equal one. So in this system of units, velocity has no uh, it is just a number without any any unit. Okay. So T and X are, are measured in the same units and velocity has no units, therefore this formula is okay. Also this number has no units. If you want to pass to physical units, you remember that U is equal the physical velocity, for instance kilometers per hour, divided by light velocity, which is again kilometers per hour, since this is why you... Uh, <coughs> But of course, using this physical, when you are working in laboratory, then of course it is stupid to calculate distances in light years because it is far away from our anthropological uh, experience, but when writing fundamental laws in physics, it is much better to leave our everything which is anthropological and to use the uh, system of units which is dictated by, by the nature. And this is of course the simplest way to, to do it. But from time to time I want to re-establish the relation of my talk with experimental physics, therefore this is what I mentioned, but I will still continue in this unit. Now, I have told you that the great discovery of Einstein was that Electromag uh, electric and magnetic field, in fact, they are only two aspects of something much bigger and the division of this bigger structure into what is electric and what is magnetic depends upon the choice of the, of the reference frame, which means division of space-time into space and time. I spent a lot of time during my talk at the very beginning to explain you that space does not exist. Space is our invention, anthropological invention, but in fact you cannot say what is space in space-time. You may say, you may perfectly define what is space-time point, but what is space point is meaningless because everything moves and whether it moves this way or that way, it moves along different points of space-time. But so the splitting of space-time into space and time is just our anthropomorphic invention, which is of course very close to our everyday life, because if I stay, I have a tendency to say, I stay here, this is my space point. But of course, we are all moving with the Earth, the Earth is moving around the world, uh, the Sun, the Sun is moving 
uh, within the galaxy and so on and so on. The galaxy is again moving and there is no <coughs> natural system of references. Therefore, this splitting into space and time, although some time useful, it is not unique. Yeah, so I have told you that the electromagnetic field is considered as a two form or a covariant tensor which, uh, which is totally anti-symmetric and this F is equal minus dt and here electric field plus here magnetic field so this is the formula to remember and now E is just a one form which is just a covector and it is much nicer to much more natural to uh, treat it as a covector e d e e y d y plus e z d z whereas b and today i will talk a little bit more about why do I use here um, the script or the calligraphic font and here not? In pure, uh, flat space there is no difference. So in, uh, in simple courses of electromagnetic where you do not touch general relativity they make no distinction between objects which I denote using uh, calligraphic and those which I denote using just normal letters but if I want to prepare you a little bit for general relativity where there are no rectilinear coordinates because in a curved space there are no rectilinear so we are forced to be able to use curvilinear coordinates then this distinction is important and I make all those calculations in such a way that they are perfectly uh, correct also in uh, in a curved background okay so B is nothing but again such a form namely B Z um, or maybe B X D Y D Z plus B Y D Z D X plus B Z D X D Y. Now I have told you what does it mean this funny sign. This means tensorial product totally anti-symmetrized. So such an object has been considered like uh, because dy you understand what is dy. It is a covector. It eats vectors and produces a number. Now it has one entry and you put vectors and it produces a number where you put d over dx to the mouse or to the uh, slot of dy it produces you zero where you put d over dy it produces you one and when you put d over dz again zero 
and d over dt again zero. Yeah? You, you know that. The same about that. Now, if you put two such black boxes, each of them having one entry, if you put them aside, one uh, near to the other, then formally you have a black box with two entries, which means a tensor, which is a pair of vectors. You put one vector here, one vector here, right? But this is not what is meant by this tensor, namely, because you may put this way or that way. And this means that I have an anti-symmetric part. Therefore, it means that it is one half that plus, no, minus one half that. Oh, and that's all. Therefore, the only way if you put something which does not contain d over dy and d over dz, for instance, if it contains dx or dt, it will produce zero. Yeah? Because this dt over dx will be put either into the slot of z, so it gives you zero, and no matter what is produced by the other sum because you have you take the product so zero tam, times something else yeah is zero so you the value will be one half zero minus one half zero which is zero so the only way to get something which is not zero is to put d over dy and d over dz. So if you put this here and this here, you obtain one. Yeah, because it is one times one and so on. And that's all. And the same here. This means, for instance, that it is minus dt times dx. Another feature of this exterior product, this is called exterior product. Yeah? So tensorial product of two black boxes is to po put one aside of the other. And this way you formally out of two black boxes, you get a bigger black box, which has n plus m entries, if this one had n entries and this one m entries, yeah? So this is very easy. But this sign means that we take this minus that. This way, this is totally anti-symmetric. And this is very important. These are such totally anti-symmetric covariant tensors are extremely important in mathematics. And of course, the, the great discovery by Einstein was that they encode in a nice way electromagnetic field. But then later on, later on, it turned out that the use of those totally anti-symmetric covariant tensors is very, very important that practically all physical, all important physical quantities may be encoded.